Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. Uh, today we have a more intimate crowd, which I think the weather is a scary feel to come out. But thank you for all who braved the weather. And I know a lot of you work right next door, so it's not too difficult. But, uh, yeah, it's still where the coast, right? Yeah, so hi, so my name is Derek Maribon, CEO of Ingenix Digital Marketing. And I'm up here with Stacy Collett from Delaville Printing. And you are at LA2M, which is a marketing education group. Uh, any first timers to LA2M? Can I see your hands? Okay, welcome folks, welcome. We do meet every Wednesday. Um, LA2M is a 501c3 nonprofit. We have a LinkedIn group that's pretty active. We have a Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at LA2M. And Lauren and Aaron are both uh, tweeting through the LA2M account, so you can follow the hashtag LA2M. You just search for LA2M and join everything. That's what I would say. There's lots of places you can just join it, like it, fan it, follow it, shoot it, <laughs> whatever. Capture it. Um, so go find those LA2Ms out there and get them. Uh, there is a Foursquare check-in, too, if anyone still does Foursquare check-in. Anyone still do that? Who's the mayor? Aaron is the mayor. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we still have a four square for LA to them. So let me see. So Stacey's up here because we, uh, as you know, it's free to come here. If you want lunch, it's 10 bucks. We pass the hat. Uh, we suggest three to five bucks if you want to donate. That covers some of our expenses. Um, so we're a completely volunteer organization. And this money goes straight to the bank to help pay for our hard costs. And then we try and do good things for the community. One thing we do is have these programs, right, which uh, are filmed every week. They're documented on uh, pictures by Carter. Roger live streams them, so we have people all over the world that watch these talks. So Trisha, um, right. some people in Iceland that might be contacting you. We have a lot of fans over there. So uh, make sure you tweet about the live streams so people can make it out in the cold. But um, then we meet every week. So come on out. But the, the past the hat to cover expenses. Uh, we also have sponsors. So you can be a sponsor of to them. I think we're booked for the next few months. But uh, if you want to be a sponsor, you get your newsletter mentioned that goes out to 2,000 people four times for the month. You get to put things on the table. You see those orange things on your table? Right? Those look pretty important. I'm, I'm betting those are from our sponsor. And uh, I'm going to let our sponsor say a few words. Laura Spensley from Serve Pro. Thank you so much, Derek. Hey, everyone. It's that time of year, January. Everyone makes a commitment to exercise. I'm going to ask you to exercise something in your home or at your renter in your bathroom. Everyone has valves. It's really important that those valves work at all times of the year, especially when pipes are breaking at this time of the year. So just turn them off, turn them on, and make sure they're working so that if you need to turn off your water in emergency, you'll save yourself thousands. Um, I did bring some water main shutoff tags. So if you have our homeowner or business owner, you tag it, let your employees know where that is, let your spouse, children. So. It'll again save you thousands. And I've been talking about the Serve Pro mobile app. So I brought a flyer printed by Delago. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so if you're a visual person, it's right here on the table. Download that app and it will be at your house before you know it. Thanks so much. Thank you, Laura. And uh, thanks to our sponsors. So Laura, you know, paid two hundred fifty dollars, which is uh, it's a decent sum of money. But I think it's a good value for a sponsor. And so this is a perfect sponsorship opportunity for small businesses targeting Southeast Michigan predominantly to get the word out. So thanks for doing that this month, Laura. Um, I'm just gonna, I want to talk about one thing. There's one event coming up that I really want you to pay close attention to. February sixth, CC Chapman is coming into town from Boston. Uh, he's written a couple books. One is called Content Rules. And then his new book is called Amazing Things Will Happen. But basically, he's pretty, you know, A-list. Um, he does a lot of national stuff. He's coming to Detroit. They're doing a big event at the Motor City Casino. So I know you're from Detroit. Uh, they're doing a big event at Motor City Casino on Wednesday night. And, but then he's coming here for lunch. So what an opportunity, CC Chapman. Um, and it's the same deal. We're not selling advanced tickets or we're not. Just come on out. So um, that could be a good one. So put that in your calendar February 6th. And uh, just to give you an idea of format, our speaker's going to talk for around 30 minutes. We may have time for Q&A. Um, when, when you finish, just let us know and we can ask questions for Trisha. And then we will do introductions. So you will get to introduce yourself at the very end of the program. And uh, today we have a great speaker from CompuWare, which is awesome. A great company in downtown Detroit. And Trisha Winter is responsible for social media for CompuWare. So she's going to tell us some of her stories and tell us how she, uh, oh, you know what? And Stacy has a t-shirt for you. So we will present the t-shirt. This is the annual presentation, presentation of the t-shirt ceremony. We'll take a quick photo of that. Just to prove that we gave you one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, 
So let's give our speaker a warm round of applause. Let's welcome Chris Winter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. excited to be here with you guys today. I am originally from Celine, so this is kind of coming back home for me. Um, a little bit about myself, I actually got my undergraduate degree in engineering and was an engineer for almost a decade uh, before I got my MBA and uh, found a love for marketing. And uh, switched over over the years, came back to Michigan about six and a half years ago. Um, you know, proud mother of two, which is why I came back to Michigan, to be close to the family. And I'm um, really excited with what I've been able to tackle at CompuWare. We have, um, we're a B2B company, we are global. I'll tell you a little bit, I think my first slide here is just all about CompuWare. We have six different business units that sell very different products, so a lot of my challenge is uh, communicating with all of them, communicating with all the different countries in order to form a social strategy. Um, we, we started up social kind of ad hoc years ago, but it wasn't until uh, about a year ago now that I was asked to step in and put a formal strategy around it when, when our CEO said, hey, we've really got to take advantage of this. We need to bring this to customer support, we need to bring this, uh, you know, to be more of a uh, active part of our business. So that gives you a little bit of the idea of what I was stepping into. Um, what I thought that I would cover with you guys today that hopefully whether you're a small business or uh, just trying to get a, a little bit uh, of information about what social media is all about. I'm going to go through a lot of the thought process that I had when approaching a social media strategy and really hopefully I'll give you guys some tidbits of the type of data that you would want to collect in order to help you formulate your own strategy and approach. So of course this is what most people thought when they you know, thrust me into this position, um, but those of you who, who are aware, social media is huge. It is, I, I'm only going to touch a small bit of what it's really about. It really is integrated into almost every part of a business and will continue to be in the, in the future. So I, you know, there's a lot of questions that you need to ask yourself. Um, you know, do I start with Facebook? Do I, do I start with Twitter? What am I going for? How do I do it? What type of content do I put out there? Um, so. You know, some people start out and they know exactly where they're going to start out. Okay, everybody that I care about is on Facebook. I'm just going to go with Facebook. Um, most people have no clue where people are, right? Where you need to go to reach them. So there are, oops, four questions that um, I needed to ask, right? How are we doing today? Like I said, we had already done some social media. Uh, we had a bunch of channels set up. So I needed to evaluate that. I also wanted to take a look at the competitive landscape. See if there were any quick wins, because social's a little bit of a, you know, hmm, does it actually add to the bottom line? Is it worth an, is the investment? Because it is an investment, both in people, resource, and cost. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Um, and certainly content. That's, it, this is all just a big content engine. This is all content marketing, uh, and social media is just the channel. So everybody needs to, to have some self-reflection, right? So I looked at uh, channels we were active in. I looked at referrals. That's a key one, really interesting information out of that. And I wanted to understand quality. What's our quality of our activity? So like I said, presences galore. Some of them look different at the time. Some of them I wasn't too happy. They looked very corporate, not very social. Um, but here's the interesting thing, is starting to globally look, all right, who's, who's gone off and started these little channels and they haven't really supported them? Like Japan started a channel and they had 99 tweets over a couple of years and 44 people were following them. So, you know, not, not the best uh, use of somebody's time there. And then I found huge, um, 
social networks where we didn't have a presence at all. Um, Video is basically uh, like a French LinkedIn, 45 million people on it, we didn't have a presence. So, you know, understanding that and really just search, 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 trying to find yourself, it's a great start. So quality, this is my favorite, favorite um, measure. It's one of the core measures that I report up to our CEO. Because in social media, everything kind of flows through Twitter. If you put a Facebook post out, you're probably also going to do a tweet on it. If you put you know, a picture on Pinterest, you're probably also going to do a tweet on it. So Twitter becomes kind of the, the central holding place of your data and how you can analyze how you're doing. So quality score, I said, you know what? I can tweet a hundred times a day, but is, is that good? Is my content good? Does anybody care, right? I could go for a bunch of followers and get a bunch of people to follow me. What, is, what does that mean, right? What is important is that people are sharing your information and engaging with your information. So you simply look at the number of times that people engage with you and share your information and retweet your information divided by the volume that you're putting out there. And this, if you continue to watch this, you can begin to optimize to make sure that you're not putting too much information out there relative to the quality of the information. So it's a really important one. Look at what's popular, right? I, I took, this is one of our channels where I looked at the top 10 tweets um, as far as, you know, most shared. And the interesting thing out, and I pointed out to the people that shared this channel, um, ran this channel, I said, look, these are all retweets, meaning none of your original content is good enough for people to share. So there's a good thing to retweeting other people's information. Um, if you listen to, um, Kit Bodner out of um, HubSpot, he's got a 10-4-1 um, rule. For every one time you put out something promotional, put out four original pieces of content, and put out 10 shares of third-party content. So um, if you want to run a channel, that's kind of a basic recipe, and it's one that I talk to the marketers at Copyware about a lot that can help you to kind of refocus. It's not about push, push, push for promotion. People don't want to be sold to. But you can sneak in a promotion every once in a while as long as you're providing that good content. Top refers, this was a really interesting one. We looked at social and non-social. And some interesting things, um, I pointed out two of them. Like I, I had never heard of these sites. It turns out sixrevisions.com was a, um, a blog post that somebody did a year ago that just had a link. It was like the top 20 free web monitoring tools, which happens to be a space we play in. And we were one of the 20, and we were getting, you know, 800, I think, it, month to month, it averages around 1,000 uh, visits a month to our website just from that one blog post. So, A, I was able to use that as a case study to show bloggers, hey, there's there's use to blogging, uh, but also just the power of third party and influence marketer uh, marketing, uh, which if you haven't heard about influence marketing, that's where you look at who's influential out there who already has that audience within your topic area, and you reach out to them and talk to them, see if maybe they do a guest blog post for you, see if they'll connect with you and start engaging with you. And then all of a sudden you can you can really grow your exposure. Um, and and Stack Overflow ended up being a, a you know very niche technical developer site that I had no um, idea about either. So now you know competitors. Sometimes I like to just ignore what they're doing, but you have to benchmark, right? Um, so I wanted to understand where they were at what their quality was, how we measure up to them. Um, you know, certainly, again, searching, search yourself, find out where everybody is. 
Um, once you have an understanding, get the data. This Remember, these are all open platforms, so you can obtain data on your competitors and how they are doing. In fact, I would venture to say that we perhaps have a better analysis and data of our competitors than they maybe do themselves. Um, so I want to understand what their quality scores are, right? And, and just try and put a picture together. That was very important to do. Uh, again, the, the engagement rate, that quality rate I looked at as well. Um, Low-hanging fruit, you know, for us, it, it was really trying to look at um, what's the most effective area. And what we did is we actually started, um, if you use any kind of um, social management tool, we use Hootsuite as our platform. Um, you can have campaign trackers, so you can actually um, track the success of, of different links that you're putting into uh, your tweets um, or, or Facebook posts or whatever it might be. And what we ended up doing is we ended up just looking at the channels. How effective was a, uh, you know, a post in LinkedIn versus a post in Facebook? You know, the same post, say it's a news release, right? Which, which one got the most click-throughs and opens? Um, how, how often did people stay? You might have um, you know, a lot of visits from Twitter, but maybe people don't actually uh, read your content. So that's an important thing to look at and to understand the duration of time uh, that they're there. Um, certainly, I did a lot of talking to a lot of people, so I talked, we have, um, <laughs> We have about, I think right now, about 70 marketers globally. Uh, so I, I did a lot of calls with them to understand, hey, are you guys advertising on Facebook or LinkedIn? We want to make sure that we have combined efforts there, uh, both organic and um, paid. Lead gen, if you guys don't know, it's slide share. Is, is the best deal in town right now. They, um, they actually have ways to generate leads for an incredibly cheap cost, um, where you can have like, you know, you, you put up a presentation, maybe like 10 slides into the presentation, want to know more, want to contact somebody, you can have a form come up so they actually register and gather a lead from it. Um, it's a really powerful tool, um, so that was a good thing to understand. You know, you can say, look, my competitor has an awesome viral video campaign, I gotta do that too. But you also have to level that with your resources, right? And, and I knew, as I was approaching the first year, I didn't have a strong video team and, and resources to do that. So. We're going to still participate in YouTube, but it wasn't going to be uh, something I was going to put, you know, all all efforts behind because I just couldn't compete with an IBM at that level. Um, certainly, you know, don't don't hesitate to just survey people, email your database, find out what tools people use, do a poll, um, and find out where people want to interact with you. And of course, um, there's some must-dos. For anybody who's not aware, um, Google is certainly beginning to use their dominance um, to do some very interesting things with social. So this is an example of searching CompuWare. Now, because we have a Google Plus profile, um, our profile shows up in the right. So you know, I didn't pay for this. Beautiful thing. So you need to be on Google Plus just for that. Then I'm going to show you, this is page one. This is a post we put on Google Plus for a dinky regional event. Nobody probably, I don't think we got any plus ones on it, yet it shows up on page one. So what Google does is it gives preferential treatment to content put on Google Plus. So don't ignore that platform just because it doesn't have the following that Facebook does because people search and, and that's where it's got the power. So that's a definite must do. 
Also, you know, for those of you interested, there's a lot of interesting things that um, Google's doing with authors in search. So now more than ever, um, individuals as celebrities in, in the digital stratosphere uh, is more important than ever before because Google now also associates, it's called a rel equals author tag, and they associate um, authors in the search. So you can get more predominance that way as well, like when it's a blog post. So focusing your content, again, like I said at the beginning, this is just a big content engine. A lot of my responsibility, you know, I have somebody that, that really manages all these channels, but I also have people on my team that create content and um, I have a couple agencies I work with to, just to feed the content engine of infographics and videos and, and everything that you need to do. Um, so uh, blogs for us, that was a big thing I had to tackle. We had a lot of disparate blogs and only one of them was even worth a stone's throw of effort. Um, so what we did is I created a um, super blog, we like to call it. This is a major project we took on this year. Um, and we created InsideTechTalk.com, which is, um, you know, more of a third-party feel. Remember, all of this is about thought leadership content first and foremost. So it was a huge effort to recruit internal authors, to really get people excited, to get all those different products and business units where they align, to really come together and put content in one place. Because you know, there's just too much to optimize. You don't want to have sprawl going. Um, awesome, awesome tools out there. With uh, maybe some of you have heard of Radian Six. There's some sentiment analysis tools out there where you can put in key terms and you can understand the frequency of that term. But more importantly, you can understand how people are talking about it in a positive, negative, neutral light. Um, that can be very important information to give to marketers to help them decide which topics they should go after. When you tweet, you know, what, what hashtag should you use? Where should you be focusing your message? What we found, um, you know, all of our, a lot of our um, marketers were focusing their message on this particular key term, which is not the way people spoke. It was not the way that they were talking out there in social. Um, so we said, look, you guys need to, to turn your message on its head. You need to align with what people are already trending and talking about, right? The, the big tech terms for us, the cloud, big data, and mobile. This is an eye chart. It's kind of meant to be what I, what I wanted to show you guys here. There are also lots of free tools out there where you can um, search and find people who are influencers on a key topic. Um, I think one is just influence.com, um, where what you can do is you type in, okay, I want to know who are the people out there in social who are talking the most about, you know, water energy savings, right? You put that in there and it will report to you the top people who um, buy uh, a couple different scores, their cloud score, their, um, their peer index, their number of followers, their activity, uh, you know, around that key term. Really powerful, again, then these are the people that, just think about basic PR, right? You know, these are the people that you should reach out to and be talking to so that they can carry your message forward. So now you've got a whole basket of data, right? What do you do? And, and here's where you just look and you apply the basics. Um, evaluate, again, like I said when I was talking about YouTube and videos, evaluate what's available to you. Most people who are starting out in social media have about no resources and you've really just got to be realistic about what you can do. You also need to understand where the limitations lie. Um, I, I would have a hard time encouraging anyone to get involved in social if you didn't have a very strong, at, at a corporation, if you didn't have a very strong executive uh, sponsor. Because you've got to have somebody up there on the top floor who believes in it, values the power, 
uh, to back you as you move forward. I always encourage scoring the ideas, right? Have sessions with people. You've got all this data. People are going to go, ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, we should do that. Ooh, we should do that. Um, score the ideas. What's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck? You know, near term, how much impact can it make? Um, again, make a balanced selection because you, you want both uh, short term and long term gains. Focus. Right? It's okay to start out in social and not boil the ocean and just say, you know what, I know that, that Facebook is cool, I know that Twitter is cool, I'm just going to start with LinkedIn. That's okay. That's a, that's a good approach. Don't, don't feel badly about that. Don't feel like, ooh, Pinterest is hot, i got to be on it. I mean, that's something we're watching, but we're still not on Pinterest because we just have you know, not been able to validate that we have the resources to really do it properly. And certainly, um, I spent the first six months of, of my time uh, in this position just talking with everybody under the sun uh, at CompuWare. I had a, a strategy deck. I would alter it for, for the different groups and say, okay, this is, this is what we're doing and this is how we're tackling it and this is what it means to you, Mr. Sales, uh, you know, VP, Mr. Uh, you know, marketer, Mr. Customer, support rep, Mrs., whatever it might be. Um, and certainly there's some, there's some basics that, especially in a big corporation, you also need to consider. Um, you know, it's probably a whole other talk to get into processes, a whole other talk to get into policies. Actually, I don't want to skip the first one here, persona. Um, it's really helpful in the beginning if you can divine who you are. So if somebody in social, um, it, it's almost thinking through like a, a crisis communication plan if you come from the PR world. Um, if someone is out there bashing you, are you going to respond with humor? Are you going to not respond? Are you going to respond, you know, in kind? These are things that you need to understand beforehand because social media is the work of many. So you need to communicate to many, many people and make sure that everybody's on the same page. And, and for all our communication, it's still something we struggle with today. I'll see, you know, one business unit, a competitor will take a ding at us and someone will ding right back and Ooh, no, that's not what we talked about, guys. That's not how CompuWare reacts to things. So, so define who you are. Have that session with people where you, where you, um, you know, say what's our personality. Um, training has to be dealt with. Um, business intelligence. You know, don't forget about this tool. Just it, there is. I like to think of. Um, I wrote a blog post on it once. Social media is basically the, the biggest BI database we've, we've ever had. And it's open to everybody. So if there is any information that people want to know from consumers, you can get it in social media. Um, it's just so powerful. So uh, make sure that your um, business leaders understand that you have this huge database available to you. Um, to gather information from. And don't forget an exit strategy. Um, a lot of times, the, the good thing, there's a lot of channels where you can start up a channel in a private mode so nobody actually sees it for a while until you've got it going. We like, like when we start, I think right now we're starting up a Facebook page in Japan, a Facebook page in Australia, and a Twitter page in France. I think those are all in pilots right now for us. And, you know, someone comes to us and they say, I want to do this. I want to start a channel. We say, all right, here's what it's going to take to do that. Prove it to us that you can do it. We're going to run this pride for a month. We're going to monitor you. We're going to help you. Nobody's going to see your data. Nobody's going to see any content you put out there until after we turn the lights on. And show us that you can feed this content engine. Show us that you can uh, you know, tweet in the right style or, or post to Facebook in the right way. Um, 
Facebook also has controls where you can have pages. So, for instance, our Japan Facebook page is only visible to people who have an IP address coming from Japan. So we don't have to worry if the Japan Facebook page fails miserably. The only market we've impacted is Japan, right? No one's going to go into the search results for CompuWare in the United States and find this terrible Japan Facebook page. So you know that's that's been the beauty of some of these tools to help us get started um, with without high risk. So if you do all this stuff, I'll say you guys have great odds at, at getting started and making uh, an impact. I put, and this presentation is um, out there on my uh, SlideShare account, you can, you can find it. Um, I've got business cards too, so you guys can feel free to contact me, email me, mention me on Twitter, I'll respond to you. Um, but I put some links in here of some, some tools out there that um, we have used Find Influence, that's the one that I was mentioning. Um, I, I do engage with two different agencies. Marketing Associates does all of my data analytics, all my data gathering. So a lot of the data that you see here, um, they do. And uh, Kaleidico um, is an agency that helps me with my uh, content production and, and helps manage some of our blogging. So. So that's kind of the picture of how I got started with CompuWare. Any questions? Um, I was noticing uh, that you had listed up there for your uh, social campaigns, source, medium, and campaign, which told me that Google Analytics is playing a big role in how you track. So could you discuss the role of Google Analytics in, in all of this? So Google Analytics actually ties into um, the Hootsuite campaign management that I was talking about. So that's where we get the data from. What happens is the, um, the Hootsuite content management system, um, it, I would say any URL shortener, okay? Think of it that way, just, just think about it as the URL shortening, the, the link creation that gives you the tiny URL, right? Um, what we can do within Hootsuite, um, and it is a paid version, but it's not a ridiculous paid version. I think, you know, as a corporation, I think we spend about $100 a month. But, um, so there's, there's, you know, much cheaper versions even than that. We can um, assign basically a tag that Google Analytics will pick up. So that's the, that's the connection, you know, very smart of you to see that connection. And Google Analytics is, you know, really, um, at, at the end of the day, if you're not getting traffic to your website, you know, all, all roads should lead to your main company website. Um, and, and so that's where, looking at our blogs, we, we utilize Google Analytics heavily, and of course our website. And now they have social goals, too, that you can put into Google, there's a lot that you can do. I will admit I'm not an expert in Google Analytics, and we do um, have an agency that we work with um, that helps us because we don't have a data analyst in our in our marketing department. Okay. So 5,000 foot level, looking back on your career, uh, how much should an MBA actually help you? Because this technology, relatively new, so I mean, was the marketing degree something that you were able to implement? and use, using this technology. And then second question, Google Analytics, uh, my understanding that's moving target, the fact that the things keep changing, and that's part of what the value of this data analysis would bring is, is what, uh, what's most current with Google Analytics. So those two questions. So um, my MBA actually personally helped me transition from engineering into uh, a marketing field. Uh, my, my path was engineering to product management to new business development to kind of segmented marketing and, and eventually I got into classical campaign management and, and marketing and found a passion there. Where my MBA specifically has helped me with social media and why my boss came to me one day and said, Trisha, I need you to tackle social and I went, what? I didn't even have a Twitter account, I was not the most active. A prolific uh, person in social media is is specifically because of method and approach to solving a problem. 
And if you can, you know, capture those concepts, um, you know, I think an MBA can be useful for certain people, depending on where they are in their career. I think every case needs to be evaluated separately, because I would not recommend it for everybody. Um, in social media, though, I mean, social media didn't exist at the time that I got my MBA. Um, so, you know, I think I was talking to a couple of gentlemen, you know, before the talk here. Social media education, that just has to be a passion for yours, uh, of yours to keep learning. I mean, I attend webinars regularly and things like this, right? Because learning from the people who are doing it um, is, is the best approach, I'll say. You know, being a big company, we used to um, have analysts and, and we would learn from, from industry analysts. Everybody's blown past the analysts. Unless you are day-to-day -day using this stuff, it doesn't matter. Google Analytics, uh, you were asking what what it means relative to everything? Or well, the larger point of it is, it's a moving target. The question is, is the value that that data, data analyst brings to the table on that side? So maybe to yeah. simplify that process. The, the most difficult thing about social media data is actually way before Google Analytics. The most difficult thing and the reason that I recommend that you perhaps get help is getting all the um, detailed information out of the APIs, which is the the um, basically the open source connection point between all these social media platforms and you getting the data and throwing it into an Excel spreadsheet. So you've got you got Twitter does it in one format and Facebook does it in another format and um, you know LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've got all these different data feeds that you have to pull from manually. Nobody does it for you, and that's not part of Google Analytics whatsoever. Uh, so that's the most difficult thing. And um, the agency I work with, a uh, month to month of, oh, the tool we were using just switched up, or LinkedIn, LinkedIn just turned off this capability. Oh, and you know, so my data month to month, it isn't even always the same data. So. That's honestly the most difficult part. But a lot of this basic stuff, you can run with free tools. Um, what, uh, what do you use to stay current with social media from yourself in the role of like learning what's current, what's ever changing in terms of like blogs you might follow, websites you might recommend that have forums or groups that sort of talk on the most up-to-date news in the industry? Sure. Um, I would say um, look at who I'm following in Twitter. Um, that might help you a little bit for, for some of the groups. Um, I, you know, if there's a particular topic that I'm looking for, I definitely go to SlideShare. Um, Bright Talk can be really good as far as looking at webinars that people put through. Um, as far as particular organizations, there's no organization that has the grasp on it that knows everything, but certainly the agencies, uh, you follow a solid agency who knows what they're talking about in social media, and they'll filter all the, the information to you. Okay, uh, so given that you had a big learning curve at the very beginning, yeah. um, what did you find to be like the most, uh, the best resources to help you get the big picture of how to develop a strategy? Um, the best resources, people or tools? Uh, either. <laughs> um, you know, people, I would say it's the marketers who, I talked to the marketers and what I did is I also found the most um, active individuals within CompuWare and we started having kind of little groups. Um, where, where we would ping them and see what they were doing. So that's another thing we do is we have, um, if you look at the at CompuWare corporate, um, we have a list in Twitter, which is um, a list of all of CompuWare's, we call them our rock stars. So anytime, you know, we, we run monitoring on any mentions of the CompuWare brand term and a few other terms. Anytime someone talks about us who's an employee and shares information from us, you know, they're, they're being a brand ambassador, we put them on this list and we actually collect data on them too. So I know, I actually have metrics on my employees. How many tweets are they putting out a month? What's the quality of their tweets, 
right? How many times do they talk about copywork? Because this is, in order to scale your social media efforts, you have to have your employees doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So that's the most important. It was good resource to get started, and it's a good kind of mini group to test things off of them. What do you think about this? Do you like this? You know, because they've been doing this for years. Um, so I would say that was very helpful. What kind of ways or tools are you using to track actionable results from some content you put out, like generating a lead or a sale or anything like that? Uh, so we are, um, you know, the, the, the trail, I was just this morning working on kind of a, a metrics and what we're going to focus on for our coming fiscal year. Um, the trail to leads is there. But if you try to get too detailed into it, your stats will always look bad. Always, I guarantee it. Um, unless you're a, uh, you know, a, a small price product, you know, consumer facing product where you are, you know, doing giveaways and, and doing things where you can really track that. Um, what I try and do, we certainly, um, are looking at downloads of content click-throughs. Um, one of the key metrics that I'm actually going to use this year is I've tried to do kind of an apples to apples and we look at every tweet we put out, every Facebook post we put out, every LinkedIn post, Google Plus post, all these things. We all call those a post and we look at how many click-throughs we get and how many posts we make and we do that as a ratio. So how many click-throughs per one post out there in social media am I getting? So that's my real big content, you know, quality score is how much good content am I putting out there that's really getting people click through. So that's one of the main scores that I'm going to use um, next year. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, what about like uh, tracking sales through those efforts? Oh yeah. So um, what I recommend and what I'm we're just starting to get data. It takes it takes time to get the data. I recommend working on correlations. So um, you know if you think about the pipeline, your first correlation for social media activity should be traffic to your website. So if you can trend. And if you know how many visitors you're getting to your website every month, and you know, you know what your engagement rate is with Twitter, or what your number of tweets are that you're doing, whatever it might be, and if you can show a correlation between those two, then you can confidently say, if I put more effort here, I'm going to drive more traffic to our website. Then you go to the next metric, and then you say, well, all right, so leads from my website. You know, can I, can I trend and find a correlation there? If you can't find a good correlation in the first step, then you can't jump to the second and the third and fourth step. And, and we're admittedly at the first step right now and trying to find that social media metric that's a really strong correlator to website traffic. I'm curious, um, how was your um, the activity on uh, your social network activity with Comptware influence your personal social network activity and where you draw the line? Sure, that's a great question. So um, I believe in um, you know practicing what I preach. So the first thing I had to do when I decided to take this on is I started a bunch of personal social media presences. I created my own WordPress press blog, right? You know, I started blogging both. I blog personally as a um, working mom. And I also blog professionally um, about technology topics on the Inside Tech Talk blog. So I would not say that, you know, my goal is not to be Cloud Score 95 girl, uh, but I know enough to advise others. Now, what we advise individual employees as far as where the, the personal professional life starts and stops, the best scenario is when an employee can use their own personality, their own name and persona and face, um, and use it for personal use, but 
use it professionally as well and have a combined presence, that is the best situation because if you want to do social as an individual for professional purposes um, and that's all you do, it, it's going to be hard for people to relate to you. Remember, these are about relationships and one-on-ones and you know, it's okay to share a silly picture of your dog and then the next minute talk about social media strategy. That's the balance that makes you human and makes people want to follow you and connect with you. Um, we, we encourage people who have maybe a not so professionally acceptable personal use of it to, um, to perhaps you know, start a separate. So for instance, if you're, if you're a customer support person um, and you're gonna be replying to customers directly using your personal account, you need to make sure that um, your your pictures and your bios that there's nothing uh, vulgar. We we ran into we had we had an employee um, out of Mexico who power of social media engaged with the CIO of Cisco in a conversation. Bully to him, right? You know, awesome. That's exactly the power. When you go into his profile, I mean, he was a twenty something and it was extremely sexual. <laughs> And so we, we, you know, emailed him and said, hey, awesome that you had that conversation. But no, people are looking at this. We recommend you change your profile this way. We recommend you do X, Y, Z. So I have a last question. I'm going to take the last question. If you don't mind. No problem. Um, so I, I find this is great. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful information. <laughs> you know, so, I know you, so you don't spend much on Hootsuite, right? So that's like a tool for pushing out. What do you spend or what? How much in percentage are you spending on the, the monitoring? Because I see like Radiant 6 up there as a tool. You probably use other tools. You use an agency. It's tracking the success um, of all your social campaigns. Is there a specific tool? How much do you spend? And then um, also, obviously, your analytics and reporting. So, because I was, I was surprised you didn't spend that much on the front end. What about the back end of the tracking? So, the biggest expense by far is content. Content, okay. Right? So, if you. I mean, just the cost to create a video alone, let alone a video every week or month, or you know, the, to, to feed the piece, um, is by far the most expensive. But what we do, and what I would recommend for anybody, especially a small company, um, is do your monitor monitoring through an agency, because agencies have unlimited licenses to tools like Radiant Six. Um, and, and that's what, we do not we do not own licenses to Radiant Six. We do all of our monitoring through an agency uh, because we have much less restrictions on terms. They're in there. They knew they know the tool very well. Um, you know, so we do spend for that. But I I did the cost analysis of what it would take to have an employee and a Radiant Six license to replace what I was spending at the agency, and it was cheaper to do it through the agency. So your, your agency uses Radiant 6 for yes. all of your social monitoring? Yes. Okay. What about that formula that you put out there, the Twitter formula? The engagement rate? Yeah. So how does that get tracked? Is that done manually or is that plugged into a spreadsheet? Or? Uh, yeah. So the same agency that does all my monitoring, they do all my reporting and analytics. That's Marketing Associates. Yeah. Um, and yes, they automate everything they can, but at the end of the day, there's this beautiful young girl named Lily from China who does, you know, goes into the Excel um, uh, spreadsheets and just tries to manually, you know, put it all together. So it is mostly, you know, kind of macro formulas in, in Excel. All right, so we are out of time. So let's give Trisha a big round of applause. What a great talk. Mary Lou, I don't know where you found her, but then uh, probably where. But what a great score. So, great speaker. I think we learned a lot. Um, so, now we get to go around the room and introduce ourselves. And we have about 10 minutes to do that. It shouldn't be a problem. And uh, we'll start up here with Bob and just pass the mic. Uh, your name, your company, and if there's anything you're looking for, you can tell us all that in uh, five words or less. All right. That's kind of a joke. But you need the, the brevity. All right. Thanks, Bob. Here you go. Uh, uh, Hello, uh, I'm Dave Menzo with Blue Communications. My name is Pete Davis, and I am also Blue Communications. 
Then please stand up with you. Patrick Holvick from WEMU. Uh, we're potentially looking for local mobile app developers, so if any of you have contact. I'm Bob Roth from WEMU, and I depend on Patrick to present me with a, an appropriate, uh, appropriately aged view of this whole thing. All oh, very neat them. Uh, Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Stacy from Dollar Bell and your local digital print shop. We love to print things fast and cost effective. Hi Beth Heiss and I help with small business sun towels. We try to do social media a little bit, but wearing so many hats it's hard to actually do it well. So I know I'm failing, but I also teach half-time at Adrian College business and marketing classes. Hi, I'm Tom Crawford and I am a mobile app developer at the local, so if you want to come talk to me after. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, coming up April 13th, uh, we're running a visual thinking and visual literacy workshop in Birmingham. Uh, I have you know, handouts here on that. If you're interested in it, you can come learn how to design better presentations. Think differently using visuals and communicate more effectively using visuals. So come see me after if you're interested. Hi, everybody. My name is Miriam Hernica, and I'm currently in between positions. Uh, most recently, I was with a uh, cloud based software company selling a sales enablement solution. <coughs> Hi, my name is Mike Grace. I work with a group called Alternative Revenue Development. It's a unique venue. It's an uh, organization that works with school districts, school districts around the state to uh, set up a revenue share program. Example, if you go into the Ann Arbor School District's website, there's a program where we set up sponsorships for companies that want to talk to the parents of, the students of the school district. If you have anybody that might be able to fit that type of uh, scenario, Please ask for Mike Grace at uh, Alternative Revenue Development. And oh, and you can also reference that same information on the Plymouth Canton School District. That's two of a hundred that we currently work with. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jordan. Uh, I work with Dexter Builders. I uh, help out with the marketing there, and we're a full service contracting company. Hi, I'm Laura Kirchner with Angelix Digital Marketing, and um, Trisha, we do a lot of social campaigns. I thought you had some great insights today. Thank you. I'm Bud Gibson. I created the search marketing program at Eastern Michigan University. I produce digital marketers and data analysts, so I was really particularly interested by this uh, talk today. Good. Oh, sorry. Hi, Colin Thomas, I'm on Media Group. Um, if you don't make it down to the auto show because it's too cold, you can go to our site, mlive.com slash auto. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm Roger Rail. I'm a venture catalyst. Uh, yeah, for web developers, uh, for uh, uh, app developers, I should say, they can go to Beer 30 at Tech Brewery. You can go to Mobile Monday. Go to A2 uh, New Tech or D New Tech. Or see me afterward. I'll give you another list. Also, Ace... Uh, 13 is uh, a week from tomorrow in uh, Livonia. It's, uh, I guess I always say, it's $13 to attend this year. And you get $18 worth of food. And then all the networking and all the presentations and all that is just gravy. So I'll be there coordinating video. Uh, I also started a video meetup group that I'll talk about later. Uh, Rob Priest, I work with Manpower Attend Agency here in Ann Arbor. And I do their social media and uh, data analysts. And Rob also forgot to tell you that he has a whole host of cards, so if there's anyone in here looking for work through Manpower, you can get one of these, or if you know anybody who's looking for work, come get one of these from us. I'm Jim Stowell uh, from ArborQuest Consulting, owner of ArborQuest Consulting, organizational development and uh, leadership firm. I've also just launched a website uh, entitled Learning to be Great. It's a site for your custom consulting, leadership, and management tools for improving performance. Check us out. Laura Spensley, Surpro Canton and Surpro Washtenaw County, your 24 hour fire water mold remediation specialist, making your loss like it never even happened. Hi, this is Laura Anna, and I'm an intern with Nginx. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Elena. I'm an intern in Nginx, more digital marketing as well. 
And I, along with the other beautiful ladies at this table, aside from uh, the first intro, are with Internet Digital Marketing. I'm also an intern. Oh, I'm Ashley. Hi. <laughs> I wasn't gonna slip you out. Yes. There we go. Actually, introduce. I mean, everybody gives their names. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm a content producer in today's digital marketing. I'm a few things. I'm speaking at LA2M next week, so yeah. please come. <laughs> Tell your friends. Um, and also, this Friday, we're holding a digital chat at 3 p.m. Um, we're gonna be talking new digital, digital trends in 2013. So follow me, Ek O'Neill. Follow Lauren, Lauren Marie underscore S, or at Ingenix, uh, Friday at three. We'll see you then. Hi, I'm Eloise. I'm with Anna Graphics, a print and web design company here in Ann Arbor. Hi, I'm Sheila Sanders. I'm currently in transition, former immunologist, looking to be a digital media marketer. So I'm interested in digital analytics, and I'm in the Washtenaw Community College Internet Professional Program. Hi, I'm Mary Lou with uh, LA2M. Um, thanks everyone for turning out today. And uh, as Erin said, she'll be with us next week. Trisha, thanks for a very informative presentation. That was really, really valuable information. I know everyone here uh, feels the same way. Um, and um, if, if you're a speaker, I know someone who is a speaker and, and would, uh, are interested in information about how you get to be a speaker at LA2M, come see me. Also, want to say once again thanks to our sponsor. And all, our uh, sponsor for next month is, is uh, Let's Go For It. Leslie McGraw, she couldn't be here today, but I just thought I would mention that. And then after that, it's Tom. Um, yeah, he's a sponsor as well. So sponsorship information here as well. I'm Barry Sherlock from Penn Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer, which just almost covers every kind of visual <laughs> uh, Video too. And then the images I shoot uh, for the LA2M meetings are on our Facebook page. So, Carter, you didn't mention this. Do you do outer space photography? <laughs> <laughs> if I can um, get the right, I'm going to If you can get the right. Okay, so, so it's important. We don't want to skip because there's two people that didn't introduce themselves. So, this is Krisha Hepatica, who's she's a master's student, uh, PR, master's student at Michigan State University, and we're lucky enough to have her as an intern at Ingenix Digital Marketing. And Emily Walsh is also a, well, undergrad. Senior. Senior, she's a senior at Michigan State University. So it's important to mention them because they're technically on the job market and they're very, very talented. So even though we're lucky enough to have them as interns for three months, um, they come out pretty darn talented and ready to go. So anybody looking for young, talented people. Not to after May though, because their internship runs through May. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so I run that company in Genex Digital Marketing. I really enjoyed your talk. It's uh, it's great. It's nice to hear from a large corporate perspective. I think we all learn something from it. You know, it's always I judge a speaker by what I learn and the ideas. Um, so thank you for your time. And we, you know, we often have great speakers here. I mean, we just do. We have really smart people, you know, who come here and speak. And they have to pass certain criteria. You know, they have to be like talented, charming, good looking, <laughs> great speakers, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Which, you know, like next week we have Aaron O'Neill, which is just really nails that criteria. So, yeah, so, so come back, bring your friends, wear two jackets and a hat, and let's fill this room next week. And uh, thanks and go make some money. See y'all next time. <laughs>